Hi, I am Sister Soyuna Pasiva of the DC Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. Welcome to the 50 Days of Pride. With all of our Pride celebrations canceled, we decided to bring you 50 wonderful days of queer heroes. Heroes are queeros. You know, there may be heroes within your life, but these are the heroes that, that have made generations of us proud to be LGBTQ+. Don't you know that you're beautiful Just the way you are Just the way you came Don't you know that you're beautiful Hey children! Happy Pride! How are you? This is Sister Mary Full of Rage. I'm the mistress of the purse for the DC Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. I'm here today to read you a story about a queero. In fact, two queeros. Today we have a tale of two cities. A tale of the AIDS crisis in two different countries. And a tale of two fierce AIDS activists who helped bring about if not a cure, then treatments to keep people living, to keep people living longer, to keep our brothers and sisters safe. Stories of HIV and AIDS, which we used to call a pandemic in the United States and which still is in many parts of the world, resonate for so many of us now during this time of pandemic. I hope you all are staying safe and healthy wherever you are during this time of pride. Here's a story about queeros in New York and in Paris, France. Larry Kramer is best known for his work with the gay rights movement fighting tooth and nail for better patient care during the height of the AIDS crisis in America. Thousands of miles away in France, Didier Lestrade, made a name for himself as the father of French AIDS activism, shouting for action to make sure his voice was heard. The two men's lives mirror each other in many different ways, and each has dedicated his life advocating for gay rights and fighting for proper health care for HIV-positive patients. Larry Kramer was born in 1935 and rose to prominence through his screenwriting career. However, in the early 1980s, he stepped away from this and began dedicating his time and energy to the gay men's health crisis, GMHC organization, to try to come up with a solution to combat the outbreak of AIDS. In Larry's eyes, the GMHC was not doing as much as they could, and he later resigned from that group. The AIDS crisis first made headlines in the, in the USA in the early 1980s, but it was seen as a disease that mostly affected gay men. Prejudice in government and in the medical establishment meant hardly any money was put towards developing treatment. Like many, Larry Kramer was furious with the lack of action, and in 1987, he co-founded ACT UP, the AIDS Coalition to Unleash Power. ACT UP used a variety of a powerful and confrontational demonstration techniques to draw attention to the cause. They held public funerals in the streets for the dead who had received no treatment. They stormed the Food and Drug Administration headquarters wearing lab coats covered with blood and laid tombstones in the street. Their activism was credited with succeeding in forcing the American government to speed up the process of testing new drugs that could help those who are HIV positive and ensuring that health care professionals give proper and adequate medical attention to HIV positive patients. In 1988, Larry learned of his own HIV positive status. Children, these two stories are so vital and so important, I'm going to have to bring them in two different books, so I'm turning the pages now. But as I do that, I want to tell you that you can learn more about Larry Kramer's story 
If you've seen an adaptation of his play, The Normal Heart, which is streaming around on the interweb somewhere, then you know something about what life was like back in the 1980s in New York during the time of pandemic, that pandemic which we know as the AIDS crisis. If you've seen the movie version of uh, the book, How to Survive a Plague, then you know about Larry and about the work that he did. I urge you to see it if you haven't already. Didier Lestrada, who founded Magazine in his early 20s, also refocused his attention to the AIDS crisis when he found out he was HIV positive in 1986. Taking note of the de demonstrations and unwavering determination of advocates across the pond in America, Didier Lestrade and a group of others founded Act Up Paris in 1989. Much like Kramer and his fellow advocates, Didier and his supporters took to the streets of Paris, fighting to make sure that HIV-positive people received the best health care possible. Since the early days and later success of both the U.S. and French strands of ACT UP, both men have continued to dedicate their time and energy to the gay rights movement and better patient rights. Children, it, there was a movie that came out a couple of years ago called BPM, Be Beats Per Minute, that tells the story of ACT UP Paris. It was incredibly true to the time and um, really captured street activism around HIV and AIDS, um, both in Paris and in the United States, including ACT UP New York. I urge you to see it. It's streaming on the interwebs. I urge you to remember that the HIV AIDS crisis is not over, that there are still millions of people around the world who are struggling to live with HIV and AIDS. And I hope that some of the lessons learned about how to fight for yourself and for others to get treatments are lessons that we remember today as we are living with another pandemic, as we are caring for each other, and as we are fighting for treatments that will help us stay alive. The lessons we learned from AIDS activists are lessons we can all benefit from today and that we can keep our flames, our torches going during this time of pride. This is Sister Mary Full of Rage from the DC Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. I love you. I hope that you are being out and proud and staying safe and staying healthy. Have a wonderful Pride season. Bye. Don't you know?